Uh, if you haven't read the book, um, the story is basically a, a series of wacky events that lead to the ne'er-do-well children of the, the Herdmans uh, being every part in the Christmas pageant, which uh, turns the town upside down and everybody is, assumes it's going to be a disaster, but without giving anything away, let's just say there's a little Christmas magic. There are standout themes in the story that inspired me, and that is, without exaggeration, a big reason why I jumped to do it, because it's about um, Christmas is for everyone, is something my character says. And I do think that, in general, we tend to turn the idea of God and the idea of the in-group into something for, for the shiny people, for the smiley, white-teethed people with uh, good jobs and clean press khakis that don't spit or swear or smoke. And, and, and that is not, that's not the, the, the message. I don't think that's what's going on here. You know, everybody needs understanding and compassion. And, and when you have a story like this that, that showcases something that is so overlooked, um, I, I think that's a, a story that needs to be told as many times as we can. I think this movie is, is, for, is for people like me um, who grew up loving Christmas and loving the story of Christmas, and then grown-ups like me who can sometimes lose touch with that. And, and if you're like me, I always need a reminder to see myself in, in everybody and to uh, give love and forgiveness to everybody. And of course, we try and do that, and, and then you, know, you start living your life and become a little self-centered or self-seeking. And then a story like this can open your heart. I think that's really beautiful. Um, it's one of the powerful things about the book, and I hope it's one of the powerful things about the movie, is just a reminder that, you know, it's not just the Mollies, it's, it's the Herdmans. Everybody's, everybody's invited to the party. Working with Dallas Jenkins was, was wonderful. I'm a little off put by how handsome he is. Um, from the moment they offered me the role, I was like, are you not available? Are you shooting the third season of Reacher? What is your deal? Dallas has been wonderful. He's, he's a great leader of, of, the, of the crew and the cast. Morale is really high. He never, he never loses his cool. He has a, a very clear vision. He loves the material. And, and he gives everybody space to kind of do what they do, especially watching Judy. Judy has such a unique voice, and I can see Dallas being here to like facilitate that. And he brings the best out of the kids which is also really not a gift that everybody has. I love Christmas, and as soon as we started shooting in that house, it was like walking into a Christmas card. So the set deck people did an incredible job being on the Christmas tree lot. Even the wardrobe, I'm wearing the wardrobe now. You know, they did such a great job picking, like what is more Christmas movie than this jacket? And I get to be with these wonderful kids. I love Sebastian and Molly and just, being able to laugh in between takes. And obviously, Judy Greer, uh, I've been such a fan of hers. My character is the mother of Beth, who is our narrator. Um, I am married. I have another son. We are members of a church. Emmanuel is the name of our church, and we, every year the church does a great big giant Christmas pageant, and this year the director of the pageant has a terrible accident. She breaks her legs, and I get honored with the task, <laughs> almost said stuck, of directing the Christmas pageant this year. And to just add a tiny bit more stakes, uh, it's the 75th anniversary of our church's and town's Christmas pageant, so it's a big deal. We've seen, obviously, a lot of romance about Christmas. <laughs> she says, sitting in Winnipeg, the Hallmark Christmas movie capital of the world. <laughs> um, and we've seen a ton of comedy Christmas and Santa Christmas and, uh, but I haven't really seen, I think, uh, what I would call like for a wide audience, like a movie that could reach like all the demographics, like a, a, a nativity Christmas story. Definitely Grace goes through a big change in the story. Uh, and that was something that was interesting that 
kind of evolved even after I accepted the role. I really loved the story. I loved the script. I had a really incredible meeting with Dallas Jenkins, the director, screenwriter. So I was excited to do it no matter what. And then he reached out a few weeks later and he's like, hey, I've been doing some rewrites. And um, I kind of feel like it would be a more interesting story to tell if maybe Grace uh, is a little, is, is not so um, agreeable in the beginning. And so it's, and that might even be the wrong word, but um, but I like it because he gave her more of a journey. He gave her like a real beginning, a middle, and an end. I am no stranger to the Christmas story, um, so I didn't have to do that kind of research. Although I found myself really agreeing with Bob, my husband, Pete Holmes, when he was asking a lot of questions about Herod. And I'm like, yeah, like who was Herod? Like where is he in this whole thing? And what happened to him? And um, and I found myself kind of like agreeing with the questions that the Herdmans were asking at our first rehearsal about the Christmas story. And I was like, oh yeah. Uh, I think when I'm playing a role, I like to try to incorporate as much of myself as I can to it. So I really loved that scene when we shot it the first rehearsal. After I cast the pageant, we have our first rehearsal and the Herdmans ask so many questions about the actual Christmas story. And it's so beautiful because Grace gets a chance. You know that thing where you like, I know how to do it. I know what it is, but then you have to explain it to somebody who doesn't and you're like, oh, oh right. Like this is really beautiful or this is a really weird detail or why do they do that? Why does she say this? And so it was fun um, to rediscover that through Grace. So I would say some of my research was done on set, <laughs> but it's nice to take that away. Um, and yes, because I spent a lot of time, I grew up in church, uh, I knew I knew the basics. So the movie is the memory of Beth. So my daughter is narrating this film and it's her memory of this moment in time, which I think is a very cool point of view. And it's why like we don't change costumes for every single scene. Dallas Jenkins is amazing. He has a lot of energy and he's had a very tough job. Um, there's a lot of children in this film and for those of you who don't understand legally what it's like to work with a lot of children, <laughs> like there's so many rules which we need because kids need to be protected, but it does make for fun scheduling and interesting days and it would be really hard to direct this movie. And I'm always impressed every day with how Dallas manages to um, get everything he needs to get shot wise, keep his cool. The kids all seem to love him. We all love him. He's still always smiling, always happy, always upbeat. Um, so I really have a lot of respect for him and his energy level. My favorite thing is making people laugh and and have fun, especially going into the holidays. The holidays can be really, <laughs> this is an overused word, but they can be really triggering for people. So like in my fantasy, some family would see this movie in the theater uh, together and they would laugh and they would have so much fun. And then, and then all the like, then all the like emotion, you know, would like really stick around and even creep in. And like some of these themes that we talked about, I think would really, um, you know, stick to their ribs. But I always hope with a movie like this that mostly it will make people have fun. The best Christmas pageant ever is based on one of the great books ever. Uh, and it tells the story of a family and a church and a community that are stuck in tradition and stuck in a certain way of seeing things, particularly the birth of Christ. So their uh, annual Christmas pageant is a capturing of the nativity in the most traditional way possible. And the kind of bright, clean, uh, you know, American version of a first century uh, birth uh, in Israel, which is just not accurate. Well, the pageant ends up getting taken over by this group of the quote unquote worst kids in the history of the world, the Herdmans, who are from the wrong side of the tracks. And they take over the pageant and take over all the main roles and uh, everyone is horrified and assumes it's gonna be the worst Christmas pageant ever. And through their own unique perspective and the questions they ask and the impact that the 
pageant has on them, combined with the impact that they have on the pageant, ends up turning it into the best Christmas pageant ever. And uh, it's warm and funny and uh, emotional, but witty. It's, uh, it's one of my favorite stories I've ever come across. When I finished the book, I just said, I, I was born to make this movie. Um, I, I have so much experience with kids, not only my own, but a lot of the, uh, the volunteer work up my wife Amanda and I have done. Um, I feel like I have a, an understanding of uh, disadvantaged or uh, poverty-stricken or even troubled kids um, because of not only our experience with adoption, but just a lot of the work we've done through our church. And so I felt like I was uniquely equipped to manage the challenges of not only directing a movie uh, with kids in it, but then also handling the kids on the set. Uh, I just felt like this is something that I, I'm capable of. The humor in the story, very much my style of humor. Um, the emotion in the story, uh, the fact that it takes you through uh, some darkness before we get to the light. Here's the beautiful thing about the best Christmas pageant ever, the book and the movie. It's for everybody. Uh, you might think because it's primarily about kids that it's a kid's movie. Yes, kids will love this movie, but this is as much for adults uh, as anyone. It's very nostalgic. It's timeless. We film it in a timeless way. Uh, you as an adult will go, I, this reminds me of my childhood, but it also reminds me of parenting. Uh, and the fact that it's so funny and so witty means it's not just for little kids, it's not just even for middle-aged kids. Um, this is for uh, everyone, and I've spoken to so many people of all ages who absolutely love it and see it the same way that my wife and I did. So I loved it when I was a kid, I loved it when I was an adult, and I think that's true, that's going to be true of everyone. We really worked hard to make sure that it didn't feel like it was locked into any particular time period, so that when you watch this movie, even in 30 years, it won't feel dated or old. Um, and we don't want that to happen now either. And so there's no specific decade that you can identify when you see the production design and costumes and dialogue of this movie. The first role that was cast was uh, Judy Greer as um, Grace, the, the mother, the one who directs the pageant. And uh, at the same time, we were casting all the kids. I'm seeing all these auditions. Um, and we knew pretty early on uh, that Molly was going to be an extraordinary Beth. We knew pretty early on that Beatrice was going to be an extraordinary Imogene. Uh, we saw that pretty quickly. I remember my wife, Amanda, who's a big part of the casting process, calls me over and says, you've got to see this audition of Molly Wright. You know, you've got to see this audition of Beatrice. Um, we just saw this uh, vulnerability and um, strength in both of them that we just thought would be beautiful. I think viewers are going to be um, blown away and, uh, and fall in love with her in this movie. And the kids, uh, the collection of kids, once we found our Beth and our Imogene, everything else started to fall into place. And the Herdmans all came perfectly into place, and Beth's family all came perfectly into place. I, I sometimes can't believe how fortunate we are to get this many extraordinary kids who can, uh, ha who have all the moves, who can, who can give us that humor and uh, the emotion um, at their age. It's been really awesome. And. Uh, when we came up with the idea of Judy Greer as the mom, um, I remember at first I thought, boy, Judy always plays characters or often plays characters that are very sharp and funny, and she's oftentimes, as, as, as Judy Greer is known, as the perfect best friend. I thought, okay, what about her as a, as a mom, you know, and a, especially a timeless mom of a, you know, of a family here in, 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 in kind of classic Americana. Um, and we saw a clip of Judy from Ant-Man and where she uh, played something different than what she normally did. And we thought, great, she's got all the colors. Uh, she's gonna bring a wit to this, but also a pathos to this. And uh, she's a, an extraordinary actress and it just quickly made sense. And my goodness, every day of filming with Judy is a reminder of how lucky we were to get her for this project. All of my friends and family who are huge Pete Holmes fans, 
uh, all were like, oh my gosh, you got Pete Holmes? Oh my gosh, I wouldn't have thought of him for this. That's so cool, that's so interesting. Oh my gosh, it makes perfect sense. And when you see the movie, uh, everyone will agree that maybe it's an outside the box thought, but I really wanted someone like Pete, who's got that sense of humor, even though it's a more straightforward character, is gonna understand the timing of this movie, and he's just been beautiful. Working with kids is very interesting. I will say right off the bat that we have a great group of kids. They're fantastic. But the old adage is never work with kids and animals. Uh, and I would say that's not entirely true because I'm glad that I've been working with kids in this movie because it has to work. Yeah, the beauty of Best Christmas Pageant Ever is that it is for everyone. You don't have to be a person of faith or a churchgoer to get it because maybe you can identify with the herdmans or maybe you can identify with just people in the community. Um, everyone, uh, regardless of their faith or regardless of the amount of church going they do, has been to multiple Christmas Eve services, oftentimes goes to church on Christmas. Christmas is that time where we do remember the parts of our faith or lack thereof that relate to Christmas. So that's the beauty of this story is that it applies to everyone. For those of us who are regular churchgoers, for whom this is a huge part of our life, for whom this story is the foundation of our faith, um, this, this movie is especially resonant for them as well. When people ask me, what is the ultimate message of Best Christmas Pageant Ever? What do you want people to remember? And it's simply this. Unto you a child is born. Hi, my name is Beatrice Schneider, and I'm from Toronto, and I play Imogene Herdman. Imogene, Imogene. She, she, she puts on, at the beginning of the movie, she puts on a really tough, She's very skeptical of the rest of the town and she's, she's just with her, her group of herdmen's and just in their own world. And I think that as the movie goes on, she, she finds trust in the people around her and she grows closer and closer to the people who are involved in the pageant and she opens up more and more. I think that the best Christmas pageant ever is really about, it's about community and people coming together and people have being quick to judge other people because of how, how they are, if they're rich or poor or just because of things that you really shouldn't judge people on. And I think that every, it's a learning curve for everybody as the movie goes on, they grow more and more. Like they see the Herdmans as they get to know them a bit more. So at the beginning of the movie, I think that Imogene, my character changes um, by, by sort of starts with the pageant and Imogene, she, she, loves, she loves her siblings. She's, closed off and she wouldn't say it to anybody. She's so tough, toughest kid in the world, and she loves her siblings. And as the film goes on, she sees that Mary wasn't just, she didn't just have Jesus and that was all she did and was, was all perfect while doing that. No, I think that she finds um, similarities between herself and Mary and she finds throughout the movie that it's okay to not be not be completely perfect or pretty or look like the Mary in the painting and she sees as the movie goes on that ah, this is the best set the ah this is the best set just the best kids the kids are also amazing and the the relationship between Imogene and Alice and Beth on screen is quite different than what you see behind the scenes but all the kids are amazing and I just love them so much yeah I think that at the beginning of the movie Imogene she's very tough and closed off and just with her herdman family and this is all, this is it. She is, she is Imogene forever. She is Imogene Herdman forever. Tough and nasty and threatening to stick pussy willows down people's ears and just stealing people's lockets. And she's a thief. She's, and as the movie goes on, she, 
she sees that she, you know, she, she doesn't have to be this way just because she was in the past. Like, she can change, and, and I think that this is a lesson for the town and for Grace and Beth and everybody that they can change, that the Herdmans have the ability to change. I love Imogene's her sense of humor. She's definitely got some got some singers that I love playing. She's she's got some sass for sure. Now Claude Herdman is you know the Herdmans are very poor. He's naughty and his glasses. <laughs> poor Claude's glasses. They can't afford to get them fixed. So he wraps duct tape around them to fix them. And um, it holds up. Is it comfortable? Probably not, but it works. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do. So the best Christmas pageant ever is about these six Herdman siblings. They're super naughty and they stumble into a, a church's annual Christmas pageant. And after all of that, they finally learn, like any good Christmas movie, they finally learn the true meaning of Christmas. Oh yes, you know, we've gone ice skating, we've done a lot of things with the other kids. Um, you know, they're so fun. You know, don't get me wrong, adults are great, but like, if you're lucky, you maybe might be able to work with one of a kid on a movie. But with something like this, when there are so many kids, it's really fun and it just feels like, sometimes it even feel like they're, real, they're my real siblings. Um, oh, even one time Santa came to set and he brought us all presents. So that was really cool. And I feel like that, nope, that literally never would have happened if we didn't have so many kids on set. Christmas means uh, being with family and uh, because especially in my family, my two sisters are ballet dancers and they're in like Oklahoma and Idaho and I don't really see them a lot, and most of the time in Christmas, I get to see them, so that's really special for me. I like to think of Ralph as somewhat of a father figure for the Herdmans, because with the absence of the Herdmans' parents, someone had to step in, and with Ralph being the eldest, he kind of had to take that role. And even if he didn't do, even if he wasn't the most ideal father for the Herdmans, at least he tried, and that's, all that really matters. So he is a bully, he is mean in a way, and he is mean, just downright. But he definitely tries his hardest to take care of his siblings like Leroy, Claude, Ollie, and especially Gladys. The best Christmas pageant ever is about a group of six disgruntled kids from who grew up on the wrong side of town, who were never really introduced to the topic of church or Christmas, and somehow found their way into a pageant just for the sake of food. So they came in with an innocent mind, not knowing much about the topic, and they showed the kids who were kind of like, what's the word? It kind of like did it out of habit and not for the love of Christmas. They showed them what the true meaning of Christmas truly really was. This group of kids is just so amazing. This group of actors, everyone on the crew, on the cast, it's just amazing people. And the camaraderie between us has been instant and it's just been like, um, we hang out all the time offset. We have all the fun times around Winnipeg. Even though there's not much to do, we make the most of it. And we're all from, we're everywhere, <laughs> we're, all of us are from different places of the world, like even the UK, Canada, USA. It's just such an atmosphere that we all connected so instantly. It was just amazing. I think Christmas is a time to spend with family. I don't, I, don't get me wrong, I love the gifts, but that's not what it's all about. Um, but yeah, really it is a time to spend with family and understand the meaning of um, Christmas. So Beth is often described as a bit of a wallflower. She likes to blend into the background. Yeah, and she's called a wallflower, especially by Imogene Herdman. That's her nickname. Um, she likes to keep herself to herself, anything for a nice, easy life. But the Hermans do not make that easy for her. Um, 
and they start getting involved in the pageant. And her, Beth, and Grace, her mom, they start to get to know a little bit more about the Hermans, and they figure out that there is way more to somebody that meets the eye. It's a really heartfelt, funny, warm way to get across a lovely message that really needs to be spread. Barbara Robinson, the author of The Best Christmas Pageant Ever, she gets it across in a really funny, warm, family way, which I really love. She's really funny. Beth and Grace, her mom, Grace is amazing. She um, lets them get involved in the pageant, and Grace and Beth find more about the Hermans, and they realize that if you give them, if you give a person love and attention and respect, then they seem to blossom more than others that are ignored. And when the Hermans blossom, it's it's amazing. They become. They are inside kind people, but they're doing what they can to survive because they don't have much. And Barbara Ro Robinson gets that across amazingly. My character changes, my character changes like the rest of the town, actually. The whole town changes because their perspective on the Herdmans, they are bullies, they are mean, they steal kids' lunches, they are rude, they say the curse word. Um, but when they actually find out more about the Hermans and they realize that they're, they're only kids and they're poor and they don't have much and their mom is constantly working and they never see them. So they're just trying to get by and they're not really mean, they're just doing what they can. And once the town and Beth and Grace, they find that out and they show them a little bit of love and kindness instead of just judging them, then they find out that they don't have to be those mean people, they don't have to be the bullies. They actually have the potential to be like a really nice person. They already are, but they just haven't discovered that yet. No. Well, Imogene and Beth are not friendly. Imogene and Beth don't have a very good, they, let's just say Imogene, isn't really friends with Beth. <laughs> Beth gets really scared when she sees the Hermans because all she knows is that they are rude, they curse, they have stolen things of hers, they, and Beth just likes to fade into the background a little bit because of the Hermans because she doesn't want to get into trouble, be embarrassed, she just wants a nice, quiet, easy life. So Imogene and Beth aren't really friendly. <laughs> I wouldn't say so. Working with all the kids on this movie, it has been a dream for me. Alice, my little brother Charlie, all the Herdmans. The Herdmans aren't Hermany in real life at all. They are so fun. Dallas Jenkins is amazing. He is a wonderful director, and when he's directing you, you can see how passionate he is about it, and you can see like how he wants to make this movie and he's very passionate about the message and he's a really kind person. So working with him has been a dream. I think Christmas is about family. Christmas is that warm feeling inside when you spend time with people, with the people who you love and you just, you take time off school, you take time off work, you spend quality time with each other, and that means the world to every family I know. And I just think being together, um, I know this might be a lot of people's answers, but it's just so special, and it's just quality moments with your family. I play Ollie. He's a little bit of the rascal in the movie. Not so much like Ralph, but a little bit like Leroy. He's kind of in the middle. It's probably the best since this is my first anything and I could not have learned how to do stuff on set from anyone else than kids my own age. And there's such a variety like me and Ralph were the exact same age but the height difference is huge. It's the cast is so much fun to just hang out with. What Christmas means to me is probably giving and meeting up with friends and family. Gladys is really mean and she's kind of just like wants to be mean to 
everybody, but she doesn't really know that she's being mean, but then she kind of wants to, and she doesn't have a lot of money, and she's a herdman, so she's the worst kid in the history of the world. So the movie is about basically where like the herdmen's like they're being like mean and then like on the Christmas pageant they're forcing everybody to like not get the parts so then they are the only ones in the movie well the Christmas pageant and then they kind of like kind of mess it up but they don't and then, and then it's kind of funny but they're like they just be mean to people and then like they don't really do good <laughs> in the movie well the christmas pageant um i love working with the rest of the cast they're so nice funny and i never want it to end i would be really sad if it did and yeah, they're like so nice and I really like them. It's been a really great opportunity. My character I play is Leroy Herdman. He's a very bad and rotten kid and he really likes to pick on one kid especially. His name's Charlie. He likes stealing his lunch and everything he has. Well, the story is it's these bad kids who go to church to do a Christmas pageant and they audition for the lead roles. They get them, and then they show everyone what Christmas is really about. And it's also about giving people a chance and seeing what they can do. Well, I think what makes Christmas films so special is it's enjoyable all year round, and you don't have to just watch it on Christmas. You can watch it if you want a feel-good movie, or just a Christmas movie. Well, it's really fun working with all these kids, because they're all my age, and it does carry over to my free time. Like, we all hang out one time, we play Christmas, curling, and it's just really nice because we all get along so well together. It's, it's crazy. It's just such good kids. Christmas means to me about being with your family and just having an overall good time, and the presents are pretty good too. I loved the script when I first read it, especially because Dallas had done a little intro at the very beginning of how to uh, imagine it. So he would say Norm Norman Rockwell and, you know, classic, so as you're reading it, that's immediately what you imagined. What resonated for me most in the script that helped me with design choices was that it was a children's memory. So nothing had to make sense. The colors didn't have to make sense. Styles didn't have to make sense because children have wild imaginations. We just tried to choose classic styles, which are obviously to each's interpretation. So what's classic for you may not be classic for me. So that's the overall look. So the color palette on the best Christmas pageant ever is quite fascinating. And Jean, the production designer, is the one that came up with it. <clears throat> and it's a lot of warm and then vibrant colors. But when we were picking costumes, we went to the rental houses to start with, and I literally just pulled by each color, went through all the decades, and just pulled a rack of yellows, a rack of blues, a rack of reds in all variations of colors. So that's how that came about. And then each costume piece actually started with, or I should say the whole, uh, the look of the film, each character had one costume piece that start that started the whole thing. Like uh, Grace was her mustard sweater that started the whole the whole look for her. Working with Dallas has been an absolute pleasure. He's funny, he's articulate, and he's very respectful. And he lets you do your job, and he trusts you. And then he's so great with the kids; they adore him. Imogene was. Uh, it all started with her sweater. I found her sweater first, and then it kind of built from there of making her um, a little bit harder, but still a little bit soft at the same time, if that makes any sense. I think it really shows when you see the film. Beth's coat, that color, I had that color in my head from the very beginning, so trying to search out that fabric, and then finding the cranberry coat color for mom so that they would 
uh, look great next to each other and then having Bob in his tan overcoat for church. It was just the, the pretty color palette, right? But it's, yeah, her coat was the beginning of her, of her whole character. I was looking at Norman Rockwell books, and one thing I noticed in his world and the way he approached visualizing and, and character is there's two sides to Norman Rockwell, which I could see in this movie clearly. There's the, uh, the poor side. The, he, he'd bring, he did a lot of imagery of children that are from the dark side of a town, but he brought heart every time you, you'd see an image that he would draw up, you could see the heart in it. And he, I don't know, we recognize our past in it. There's, there's a sense of then that was, it's always very present. And then there's the family side of Norman Rockwell's work, which was the Christmas, the family going to Christmas and the presence of that and the middle class of the 50s. So those two things I felt were very strong in, a, in our story. And I said, if I tell you 1970s, uh, or 1980s, we're locking ourselves in. So I said, let's give ourselves a time window in which this whole story takes place. The important thing is that anybody watching the movie feels it happened to them when they were a kid, even in 20 years from now. So you know, you gotta think about that. And I said, our town needs to feel charming, warm, middle-classy, <coughs> I think was important because I needed the contrast with the Herdmans. Um, not too uh, specific. The generic aspect was really important. All graphics, signage, all of that. I want to keep away, I said, we want to keep away from anything that states now. What will the audience think about this movie? It really depends on who's watching the movie, I think. Um, and, and I mean, if you are from a religious background, you are going to identify with this, no doubt. Um, if you're not, you are very much going to identify with it because of the Herdmans. And that's what's so wonderful about this story, is that it's not preaching, it's not pushing an ideology on you, it's making you understand that nobody should be left behind. You know, these Herdmans, they're, they're as much people as any other, and if you give them a chance, you know, you'd be surprised by what they can bring to the table. I love it because I identify with that a lot more than I identify with the other characters in this story. This book is just so special, seeing these characters come to life. Um, again, Best Christmas Pageant Ever by Barbara Robinson, uh, who wrote uh, the, the novel. Um, gonna be a special film. And who doesn't love a family Christmas type film that just makes everybody laugh and come together as a family and, and just really and then celebrate the true meaning of Christmas behind it. Just really everything that checks all the boxes for us to tell a good story. What makes the best Christmas pageant ever uh, perfect for Kingdom Story Company is it really defines uh, the types of stories that we're looking for, which is really about, it's a rush of hope um, that really just showcases the power of the gospel and what the gospel can do. And so here are these kids, these group, uh, this group of misfits um, that everybody kind of, um, uh, discards, so to speak, the town discards them, and yet they're the ones that end up teaching everybody the true meaning of Christmas, and how beautiful is that parallel? Um, um, sometimes you can, you can see the true meaning of what Christ did for us on the cross through the um, most unexpected of ways, and, uh, and, and I, I love the fact that so many people are familiar with this story. We're making best Christmas pageant ever for families. I mean, this is a movie to come together. It's not just kids, it's for adults. It's for uh, creating moments for um, families to come together to be able to, whether you've read the book or shared the book together as a family or not, to be able to laugh, to be able to cry. The, you know, there's performances that will bring a tear to your eye, but at the end of the day, really celebrate and be reminded of what Christmas is all about. And so I, I love, love, love that, where um, you go into a theater, you hope to be entertained, and you walk out not only entertained, but then glad that you spent the last hour and a half to two hours in the movie theater. The way that Dallas is telling the story is so timeless, and so it's gonna be able to reach an audience no matter what generation it is, because they'll be able to connect with something in the movie that is very, um, uh, important to them or very close to them. And, and I, I love that, the fact that he had the vision, has the vision to be able to uh, tell the story in that way 
um, so that it is timeless and it is, um, it's this thing that we'll be, up, be able to always come back to instead of saying, oh my goodness, look how old that is. That's not the goal of what this one is. It's to be able to enjoy it the same way no matter what year in and year out. And the best Christmas pageant ever, it really tells the gospel story. It tells why Jesus was born um, and what happened, uh, how people were impacted by Jesus' birth and yet was to is being told from the viewpoint of little kids, which is so innocent and it's so beautiful. And it's not, it doesn't feel like you're being preached at because these kids are the ones that are sharing this gospel story of what Jesus did. Um, and it's straight out of the Bible. I mean, that's what's beautiful. <laughs>